I quote in the beginning Bruno, se non, ho, se non è vero e ben trovato. Which was... Well, it's my pleasure to be here. My name is Simon Pringle. Um, I am an English author. I'm originally from London, but I lived abroad in the Bahamas as a child growing up there, which was where I first developed my interest in boats. Um, I'm now a full-time writer. I'm working on my second book. Now I'm in Brazil for the launch of this uh, Portuguese version of Das Booty, which was a book I wrote in 2013. And I have been in Brazil now for four months. This has been an extended visit to participate in the translation and production of this book, even from the background. Well, to be perfectly honest, I don't think I had read a single book until I was 20. I was a sportsman, believe it or not. When I met Bruno Tolentino, he opened my mind to culture, different kinds of culture, but particularly poetry and books. And that was really the beginning of my interest in literature. I stopped playing sports and I started reading books. And that has been the story of my life ever since. So my first introduction was really to poetry, uh, con you know, modern British poets, American poets, Eliot, Yeats, these sort of people. And then European poets, Montale, Seferis, uh, Ungaretti, Leopardi. These were Bruno's interests and therefore I shared them because that's what he showed me to enjoy. When I first encountered these authors, I wanted to be a poet. So they did have a direct influence on the style of poetry I wrote. And I did write poetry in my 20s. But in my late 20s, I decided I did not have the gift to be first division poetry, and I did not want to be second division. So I more or less turned away from poetry at that point and pursued different careers. But those early memories of those particular writers had a great influence on me. So when I came to write Das Booty in English, all those resonances of the language, the rhythms, the ideas, they had stayed with me. And so I was able to draw on those resources. Well, I think we can say that Bruno represented high culture in my life, and I represented low culture in his life. I was much more interested in rock and roll I would listen to Sibelius because he was playing Sibelius all the time, and I love Sibelius. But I very rarely choose to listen to classical music. I would far rather go and put on The Doors or The Rolling Stones or contemporary musicians like Alabama Three, who get a mention in the book here, my favorite band. So I have always been a aficionado of rock and roll, of popular culture, both musical and Literary, you know, I read trash fiction happily. Uh, I'm not a highbrow. Well, trash is uh, entertainments. I mean, Graham Greene referred to his novels as entertainments, yet they are quite highbrow writings. So I'm just being slightly comical here. I would read James Lee Burke. I would read uh, detective novels, crime thrillers. Most people consider this popular fiction, and it is. Uh, but I enjoy that kind of directness. I like Stephen King very much, so I am in the mainstream. Das Booty is a literary book. There are lots of references to poetry, quotes from poetry. It is written in a style which I would call literary. But it's also funny. It's, oh, it's meant to be funny. So. Although there are many references to popular culture, there, I think it is balanced by the references to high culture. The whole situation is so absurd, it strikes me in hindsight, what we call messing about in boats. There's a famous English concept of weekend sailors, people who never go out anywhere. On, on the weekend they say, oh, I have a few beers and go out and wreck the marina. You know, they crash into people, they fall overboard. So this concept of amateurs doing something actually quite dangerous and being confronted by absurd situations. You know, a cruise liner just coming up in front of you like that, or the Moroccan Navy turning up out of the blue when you are about to shipwreck. So the whole process was one of 
Yes, it was surreal, and yet it was utterly real. I quote in the beginning Bruno, se non, se non è vero e ben trovato, which was, he was always his excuse if he ever made anything up. And then, later I will mention this poet, Charles Tomlinson, who wrote a poem for us, Bruno and I, called Hawks. And he was a colleague of Bruno's. And writing about Constable, he said, the artist lies for the improvement of truth. Believe him. So the only made-up character in Das Booty is Gloria. All the rest of the characters existed. Most of them are all dead by now, I'm sure. And they are depicted as they were, almost without exaggeration. But as I say in the book, this is not a reportage. I'm not a journalist reporting on events. Yes. So there's an imaginative recreation. You could not really make this up because it sounds so kind of, yeah, ridiculous. The very idea that three people should go on this journey without any preparation, without any thought about the consequences, because Bruno was like that. He said, no, the, my, my, my astrology is good. My psychic leader is telling me everything is a green light. Uh, the itching says it's good here. It's not, we're going. Of course, me, down to earth, say, how do we do this? How do, what about this? What about that? And Neville, this guy on his crutches, as the crew. I mean, he could hardly stand. And there we are going to go on a nearly a thousand kilometer journey to Africa. I learned of Bruno's death, uh, which obviously moved me a lot, but I had not been in touch with him and I had no idea really what he had been doing in Brazil. And as I say, about a year later, I was talking to an old colleague who I work in advertising with, a writer, a movie writer, as successful in his own way. And we worked together in advertising. And from time to time, I would tell him stories about my past. But I used to then tell him about Bruno, and he was very intrigued by this character. So one day in 2008, I'm telling him the story of the boat trip, which became Das Booty. As he said to me, he said, look, if I had all your life experience, I would be writing many novels, but I have to make it all up. I have to invent everything. So just write it. Anyway, I made excuses, but about a year later, I had some spare time, I was alone, and I thought, I will do it. I will start. And that was to do something in homage to Bruno. Selfishly, I had come to a certain age. I have left nothing behind. I don't have a family. I don't have children. I don't have property. I live out of a suitcase. So I thought, this is my Banksy. This is going to be my graffito on the wall. Pedro took on this task of translating and I don't think anyone else would have. I mean, I have friends who don't understand it who are English readers, and they are puzzled. And the, because of all the word games and references, this is a very big task for a translator. What is a front row rucker? I never heard of this. Ah, it's someone who plays rugby, and he's in this scrum, and he does it. What is rucking? And so on. So we had some sessions together where we would go over page by page, whenever he had any queries. And maybe two months ago, we are finished. We are done. É, é verdade que sim, como o Simon falou, que eu tenho dificuldade de dizer não, mas eu já queria traduzir esse livro. Eu tinha ficado até um pouco enciumado quando eu soube que o Érico, né, tinha, um, tinha um pedido ao Érico para traduzir. E aí o Érico me procurou e eu falei, claro, eu quero traduzir Das Boot. Mas eu não tinha lido ainda. Então, quando comecei a ler, e, peraí, um buraco mais embaixo, né, assim, as coisas não são tão, não é assim, um simples, uma simples narrativa aqui, né, tem muita coisa, primeiro o ritmo da prosa é, salta, quer dizer, ridículo dizer que o ritmo salta aos olhos, mas salta aos ouvidos, né, é, fica muito evidente, então penso, hum, é preciso ter todo um cuidado com o ritmo da tradução. Segundo, as referências, que são muitas mesmo. Terceiro, tem as referências aos poemas do Bruno, que eu conhecia, embora alguns 
alguns poemas que apareçam como referência sejam inéditos. Então, ou você pergunta para o Simon, ou você tem acesso aos arquivos do Bruno Tolentino, né, ou você o conheceu, alguma coisa assim. Quarto, você tem o vocabulário técnico, que abunda no livro, o vocabulário técnico de navegação. Eu conheci Bruno Tolentino como uma figura pública, na entrevista dele para Veja. Uma entrevista que me impressionou profundamente, me lembra, senti leve, assim, esse cara é louco. E dois dias depois pensei, mas ele tem razão, ele está coberto de razão. Quando eu voltei para o Brasil, eu comecei a frequentar, algum tempo depois, o um seminário de filosofia do Olavo de Carvalho. E o Olavo organizou a, um stand da Bienal do Livro para a editora da faculdade da cidade. Chamou o Bruno. Foi assim que eu conheci o Bruno. Fui nos eventos, no stand. O Bruno me deu o telefone dele, eu liguei para ele e nós começamos a nos encontrar. Ele é uma pessoa extremamente generosa com a sua cultura, com a sua capacidade técnica de poesia, capaz de me explicar como funcionava um poema perfeitamente. Tem duas frases do Bruno que me orientaram para sempre. Primeiro, uma frase que ele atribuiu a Manuel Bandeira. Aí, como muita coisa do Bruno, Bandeira disse, disse isso mesmo, não sabemos, né? é, mas, mas a lição vale, quer dizer, não basta saber que é bom, tem que saber por que é bom. A outra coisa que foi muito importante, ele, ele diz, dizia assim, é, hoje em dia ninguém mais escreve um texto para explicar como uma obra foi feita, você só escreve um texto como um pretexto para falar das suas próprias ideias. Então, essa postura, que é até uma postura de humildade, você evitar, não vou pegar um poema só para dizer X ou Y. Não, eu quero, se eu vou falar de um poema, eu quero me preocupar em, em primeiro, entender o poema, em sumir diante do poema para entendê-lo. E só por isso, acho que no cenário brasileiro hoje, isso já seria bastante coisa. Mas ele, como já disse antes, ele me ensinou muito é, sobre poesia e teve uma generosidade assim, enorme, com o seu tempo. Nós ficávamos juntos horas e horas e horas, de dias mesmo, na casa da, da tia Helena. E, às vezes, ficávamos só lendo poesia. Só isso. Ele lia, eu lia, ele me perguntava, dizia assim, quero ver como você lê e tal, eu pedia que eu ficasse lendo e me ensinava a ler melhor. Esse tipo de coisa. É, mas ele se mudou para São Paulo e, e nosso contato deixou de ser tão intenso. Well, before I came to Brazil, I had begun to learn of his importance as a literary, as a poet. Not only because he was awarded so many prizes, that uh, he was celebrated, if not on a wide scale, certainly by those who know. Um, and then when I got here, I began to learn more that he was a very polemical figure, that he had made uh, a huge impact in certain areas, but that he was resisted at some other levels. And then I also learned that he's, as a cultural figure, it may be many years before he is fully appreciated. Because what he writes is sometimes above or outside many people's experience. When he wrote in English, which he did when we first met, a lot of people immediately grasped his poetry, even though they were not educated people. So possibly here in Brazil, it requires a certain degree of cultural sophistication to really grasp the importance of him. But I do understand he is a seminal figure. And I've learned more about his activities here in Brazil. And he is the same man that I knew, only perhaps more exaggerated. During the time I knew him, I often encouraged him to come back to Brazil, and he was He refused, and he made many reasons why not, that he would encounter this difficulty and that he would be resisted in that quarter and that they would not understand him and all the way. So now reading the accounts of his time here, you can see that element is true. Nevertheless, he managed to create a work here which will last. So I understand that he is a very important figure here and very important to a lot of people on a personal level. So I'm delighted if this book throws a little bit of light on the character and the personality uh, as I knew him. Many, many thanks to you. My pleasure. Thank you.